Welcome to LEAD. We've been looking at maturity during this season and, uh, well, we're coming into Thanksgiving. And as we think about Thanksgiving, I think that's such a part of a mature leader. The idea of, of, ex of being thankful and not just being thankful because we could be thankful about things and not express it. So being thankful, but also expressing thanks. Being thankful for, uh, for the people in your life. I, I would say this, it's very cliche, but it's so true. Having an attitude of gratitude, a lifestyle of thanksgiving. In fact, in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, uh, the Apostle Paul tells us that, that that is the will of God concerning us, that, that we are thankful, that we give thanks. Certainly we know that, that God receives or should receive our thanks for what he's done in our life. You know, the old, the, uh, old uh, adage, you know, count your blessings. Well, that's important to do, and you probably never get to the, the number of blessings that we're blessed with. I think this, in a, a life of a mature leader, well, that person's thankful. Thankful for what is happening in their life. Thankful for the people in their life. I think about, you know, what I do. I'm, I'm thankful for, you know, my, my wife. We'll be married 35 years in January. That's a long time to have to kind of deal with a guy like me. Or, you know, my, my daughter, my son-in-law, my grandchildren, I'm thankful for them in my life. I'm thankful for the staff at Elevation Church that serves and, and does so much to uh, uh, makes an investment into the future and into the ministry of, of this church. Thankful for the congregation that I get to serve. It's a blessing and and, and, and sometimes you need to think, say that. And I would say for everyone that's viewing this, that when you understand that uh, being thankful and expressing your thanksgiving is so important, not just this time of the year, but, but in the mature leader, that they are thankful and they, and they express that to the people around them, that it's not just, well, you know, we take for granted the people in our life, but we're thankful. And I, I like what uh, Hebrews 11, it's, it's if I had a, Favorite, this is probably one of the chapters of the Bible. It's the Faith Hall of Fame. It's the, the Heroes chapter. And it kind of runs like this. Let's give a, a brief over, overview. It's talking about faith. And now faith is a substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things not seen. And it says, by this, the elders obtained a good uh, report, a good testimony. And it says, we understand that by faith, the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things that, uh, that are seen are uh, not made of the things which are visible, that, 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 that God was working. We believe that in, uh, prior to anything that we see now. And then it goes on to say, by faith Abel, and by faith Enoch, and by faith Noah, and by faith Abraham, by faith Sarah, by faith Moses. And it spends a lot of time on Abraham and, and Moses, and Sarah, uh, Abraham and Sarah, and Moses. And then, then it starts in this big long list uh, there toward the, uh, the end of the chapter. I'll pick it up in verse 30. It says, By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who uh, did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And then he says this, verse 32 of Hebrews 11. And what more shall I say? For the time would... would uh, fell me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, uh, quenched the uh, violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weaknesses were made strong, uh, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of uh, the aliens, Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting uh, deliverance, and uh, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and in caves. 
of the earth. And it goes on to, to wrap that chapter up. But I think about how the writer in Hebrews, which is uh, conflicted and a little controversial, uh, maybe with who wrote it. Some would say they think Paul did. Others maybe would say Luke or Barnabas or Apollos. It doesn't really matter. We know the Holy Spirit inspired it. But whoever pinned the words in their frame of mind as the Holy Spirit inspired them, they felt the need to acknowledge even those not mentioned by name. We, we get Abraham and we get Enoch and Abel and Moses and Sarah and these, these giants of the faith, if you will. But then the writer says, and here's all these other people that their names don't even come in here, but they gave their lives and they lived in hard places and dealt with difficult, difficult situations and, and were persecuted and tortured and, and died not seeing all the display of what they would get and, and the reward they would have. And it's almost as always saying, thank you for all these lives that people gave. Their faith stirs us and we're thankful for their example. In fact, when it opens Hebrews 12, it says, it says now being compassed, surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses that all these people that have run the race already are cheering us on. And we ought to be thankful like that. If you're going to lead and be mature in your leadership, you ought to be thankful for, this is a mark of maturity, for the people in your life that have helped to provide where you're at right now. I know for a fact that I stand on the shoulders of people that went before me. You do as well. Be thankful for them. Be thankful for the people that came before you, for the people that are coming after you, the posterity, and the people that you're serving alongside of. That's a mark of maturity. And right now, as you're watching this, and, and you'll be enjoying Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving holiday, maybe you're with friends or family, with people maybe you don't see as often as, as you'd even like to, don't get caught up in just the busyness of a day. Take time and say thank you. Thank you for what you've contributed in my life. Thank you for who you are. And express that. And be thankful. And above all, take time to give Him thanks. Because every good uh, gift that's come into your life is because of Him. Father, lights. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy this day and, and, or tomorrow, whenever you're watching this. Enjoy it and have a blessed Thanksgiving.